Hello everyone, I'm Jeff Stanley with Stanley Handcrafted and today we're going to be going over the basic supplies you'll need when you start making candles. Now this isn't a complete list, but this is going to be a real basic list of the things you will absolutely need if you're going to start making candles. I've also included a couple things at the end that are, are nice to have but not really needed in the beginning and uh, we'll go over those as well. So I'm going to come over here. So basically when you first start out with candles, you're going to start, most people start with the double boiler method. So you're going to need a melting pitcher and you can get this in the four pound one and the two pound one. Uh, it, it's maybe three, four dollars difference between these two. I would go ahead and get the bigger one just because uh, it's going to give you a little bit more options. Uh, it's going to give you a little bit more room for melting wax and you can pour a lot more candles at the same time. So basically with this one, uh, you're gonna use the double boiler method and if you don't know what that is, you're basically gonna have a saucepan or some type of pot that you can put about an inch of water in and then when you fill this with wax, you're gonna put it in here so that the, wa the water will boil this and melt the wax. So once we got that, uh, you're obviously gonna need a stirring utensil for the wax. And then of course you're gonna want a thermometer. Now the thermometer, I got this one at Ace Hardware. It's just a basic barbecue thermometer. You can use anything you want. The, it, and it's, I definitely wouldn't recommend getting an expensive thermometer because most candle makers, once you get familiar with everything, a lot of candle makers will stop using the thermometer because you can kind of judge the wax as you uh, start to go on. So just a basic thermometer, it doesn't have to be like exact, you don't have to buy like a $30 thermometer. You can get a $5 one, a $10 one, even a dollar one works fine. So once we get past that, you're gonna need to choose your wax. Now, I, I, I use these wax blocks in a kit that I make. So uh, wax comes in all kinds of different forms. So if you're gonna use soy wax or paraffin, this is Joy Wax uh, from Nature's Garden. You can also use uh, 6006, which is what I use exclusively, or almost exclusively. Exclusively, that's my favorite wax. Once you get done melting the wax, of course you're gonna need fragrance oils. Now, you're, you're gonna wanna use fragrance oils over essential oils. Uh, fragrance oils are gonna give you a much stronger scent when you pour it into the wax. Uh, essential oils, you definitely have to be careful with. They're not usually recommended for candles. For one, they're very expensive. Two, they're not really made to burn inside candles. And some of the essential oils can be harmful if burned. So you definitely wanna to go towards fragrance oils. And I've got a few here from Candle Science, Lone Star, and Nature's Garden. And then once you pour your oils, you're gonna to want to use some type of a dish to pour this stuff in. Now I've got just a basic Tupperware dish and you're gonna, if you use a plastic uh, type of anything to measure your oils, you wanna make sure that it's rated to stand up to some of these oils because these oils are very harsh and if you pour these into just like a, like a red Solo cup, it'll melt it. Uh, once we get past that, you're obviously gonna need some type of a jar and a lid. Uh, now, not all jars have lids, so basically you'll need some type of a container or a jar to pour the candle wax into. And then of course, you're gonna need wicks. And this one, you can get wicks in all kinds of different sizes, so before you get a certain pack of wicks, you're gonna wanna look at something like Candle Science or Lone Star, they have wick guides, so that you know exactly the, the right size of a wick to put inside a specific jar. And then to adhere the wicks, you can go a couple different ways, and you definitely want to make sure that you put something on the bottom of the wick tab so that it sticks to the bottom of the jar. If you don't do that, as the wick and the candle burns all the way down, if, so, if the wick is not adhered to the bottom of the glass, it can drift over and it can burn up the side of the glass, which is a very big fire hazard. And you can actually melt the jar in some cases. So there's a couple different ways you can go. You can get wick stickers, which are these little things that just peel off and they stick to the bottom. Uh, these work okay, but they, if your candle runs hot, these can kind of pop up from the bottom. Hot glue gun also works. This stuff works really well. If you do go with a hot gun or a hot glue gun, you're gonna to wanna to use a high temperature glue. That way it doesn't come apart from the bottom of the glass either. Now the best thing to use, and this is what I use, is Red RTV. And it's just a gasket adhesive that you can get at Home Depot or any hardware store. I think even Walmart has it. You put a little bit of a dot on the bottom of these, stick it at the bottom, wait about an hour, and this stuff dries like cement. Those wicks are never coming out. The other thing that you're gonna need is some type of a wick holder. And you can go as cheap as 
just a popsicle stick with the hole drilled out. I bought these at Michael's and then just used the drill to drill out the center of these things. And then you'll just run these through here and it holds right on the top there. And you can go up from there too. You can use clothespins. They work really well. These are very cheap options. You can get metal wick tabs. These things are a little bit better because you can snap them into place like that. This one's already been snapped, so it's not, it's a little loose, but these hold really tight. And then this is probably the best wick holder I've found. And this is basically just a bag clip that I bought off Amazon. And these things work extremely well. And they'll just hold just like that. And then of course, once your candle is done, you're gonna need something to clip your wicks. Now you can go with scissors and I got these to show kind of the difference here. They work okay, but you gotta hold it well. And you can see right there, it slipped a little bit as I cut it. What I recommend is getting some type of cutting pliers. So cutting pliers, you just get right in there snip it and it's done these things work great and you can pick them up anywhere from five to ten dollars from again any hardware store i forgot to even mention to to hold the wicks in i use just a pin casing so this is probably a tricky part that a lot of people don't pick up on so if you're going to place your wick it's kind of hard to center it down in there and make it stick really well so i just grabbed a big ballpoint pin i took out the pen components from it and i just run the wick right through there that way you can guide and hold it all the way down so that is definitely a must also and you can find these anywhere so that's pretty much the list of the things you you absolutely have to have uh, some of the stuff over here that i'm going to be talking about are things that are a good idea to have or things that you can have but they're not uh, they're not really necessary and things like color you can get liquid dye or dye blocks if you want to color your candles uh, again, these are really cheap and you can get these at Candle Science, Lone Star, Nature's Garden. And then this one right here, this is a heat gun. And depending on the wax that you use, I put this one kind of in the middle. You don't really need this one if you're gonna be working with soy. It's definitely a good thing to have just because you can smooth out the tops. If you're working with, if you're working with certain waxes like 6006, you're gonna get a sinkhole in the middle of that candle. So if you're working with 6006, a heat gun is an absolute must. You're gonna have to fix that once it's done. But if you're working with something like soy, they pour pretty smooth. You're not gonna have any issues after the candle cures. So you really wouldn't need a heat gun. It's still a nice thing to have. So this is kind of a must, kind of not depending on what kind of wax you're using. And then if you start to get to a point where you're making a lot more candles. This is definitely not a must, but if you're making a lot of candles, it turns into a must. And this is just a bigger wax melter. And this is the Presto Pot wax melter that I make. Uh, this thing is really nice. And if you're gonna be doing an all day run of candles, you really can't go wrong with something like this. Whereas with something like this, you're gonna heat this up it's gonna take you a good half an hour to melt it down and then pour it. And if you wanna to switch to another scent, you're gonna pour it out, you're gonna wipe it out, clean it, and then you're gonna melt wax again. Where this comes in handy is you can melt 12 pounds of wax in this, and then whenever you need oil, you just pour it out into this, add your oil, and then pour. And then you have a full thing of wax waiting for another batch. All right, so that's pretty much it. That's uh, a pretty detailed list of the exact things you need to start making candles. Like I said, only the stuff I mentioned in the beginning is the stuff you will absolutely have to have. The rest of the things, like the, uh, the bigger melter, are things that are just nice to have in the future. Uh, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If I missed anything, please let me know in the comments down below, and thank you for watching. <laughs>